Weet u wie Tobias Asser is? Met deze vraag gingen we de straat op om te peilen of hij anno 2011, precies 100 jaar nadat hij de Nobelprijs voor de Vrede in ontvangst nam, nog leeft in de herinnering van de mensen. Mocht ik jou wat vragen? Nee, liever niet. Weet u wie Tobias Asser is? Ik zou het niet weten. Tobias? Yes. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Ik heb het hele park hier laten bouwen. Koning wie? Nou, het zal best een, 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 een bekendheid zijn geweest. Anders wordt de straat niet naar hem vernoemd. Echt niet. Weet jij wie Tobias Asser is? Nee, ken ik niet. Wat is dat? Was de schrijver. Vertel het eens. Wie is dat? <laughs> De elegante verschijning van een heer met blonde haren, een tenger gelaat, grijze snor, een puntige en licht gebogen neus. Met kwiekenschreden en vlotte tred wandelt hij door de straten, gekleed in tenue, zijn elleboog voorgoed opgetrokken door de zwarte portfolio geklemd onder zijn arm. Zijn sprankelende diepzwarte ogen, voor altijd hectisch, nerveus, kwiek en vlot, op zijn weg naar het station. Een jurist, een beroemde jurist. Internationaal recht en privaatrecht, ja. En verderop is ook nog het Tobias Asser Instituut. Ja. Op steenworp afstand van de Asserlaan staat het TMC Asser Instituut. Ik spreek hier met directeur Frans Nelissen. In my view, the uniqueness of Asser is his international orientation in an era when that was definitely seldom. At that time, uh, in those days, it was quite common to have a strong national focus, a nationalistic focus. He had a truly international orientation. He considered himself to be a citizen of the world. Aha, een wereldburger dus. Ik steek over via de Asserlaan naar het Vredespaleis. Daar ontmoet ik de secretaris-generaal van het Permanente Hof van Arbitrage. Christian Kreuner is zijn naam. I think he was a unique person uh, generally in uh, having been both uh, an eminent uh, legal scholar and um, a practitioner as well and a very um, refined diplomat. Uh, he combined all of these uh, three qualities uh, when he was legal advisor of the foreign ministry. You may know that he subsequently also became government minister in his own right. But there's much more to say about Asser. Uh, he was, I believe, also a true intellectual person. Uh, he would recite poetry by heart, for instance. He um, spoke several languages, and uh, he took a genuine interest in life um, and the politics uh, of his times. What strikes me most in Asser is that he is such a rare combination of in a visionary and uh, a pragmatist. Um, Asser's ideas were cosmopolitan, and in that respect he was, uh, he was not alone, he was in good company, and he actively looked for that company, uh, which became an international group embodied in the Institut de Droit International, which he founded as the youngest member in 1873. Um, I think what motivated him uh, mostly was his very deep belief in the need for peace. Not, not only had there been many wars uh, in the um, 19th century, as you know, but um, people felt that, um, some people at least, felt that there was a gathering storm. Together, I think he was really somebody who stood out and tried to implement his uh, beliefs into a practical realization. He was interested in what law really meant in concrete terms to society and people. Tobias Asser, of Toby zoals hij ook werd genoemd, kwam ter wereld op 28 april 1838. Met een vader die rechter was bij de Hoge Raad en een oom die minister van Justitie was, had Toby op het gebied van recht, ik kan u verzekeren, bij geboorte al, een flinke voorsprong. Ik vroeg Daan Asser naar de wortels van de Asser-familie. Hij was brought up in een uh, Jewish family, uh, which started to. Um go to university at the end of the 18th century after the uh, French Revolution and um, uh, they were very practical, they um, were lawyers um, in Amsterdam, very liberal and they had a broad outlook, very international orientated. 
Dames en heren, de tijd zit nog niet mee. De onrust van de revolutie brengt ons op alles in het uit. Ondertussen vreest men voor verstening van de wetgeving. Mensen, mensen, ik snap best dat jullie in de spanning van de afloop van deze geschiedenis wat ongeduldig worden. Maar nog even uw aandacht alstublieft. Met het toenemende handelsverkeer tussen landen wordt internationaal privaatrecht steeds belangrijker. Het recht heeft gesproken. Glorificatie zal zegenvieren. In ons kleine landje houden we ervan te zeggen dat we zo internationaal gefocust en open zijn. Daar is wat voor te zeggen, maar wie denkt dat we ook zo waren in de tijd van Toby heeft het goed mis. Nederland interesseerde zich nauwelijks voor de wereld. En omgekeerd. Onbegrijpelijk voor iemand als Toby. Hij was een ras echte diplomaat met talrijke buitenlandse connecties. Een pragmaticus, wars van getheoretiseer. It was as a practicing lawyer that he was frequently confronted with the obstacles hampering international trade. And that is what made him uh, finding his most important work to further the codification of private international law. Hij organiseerde conferenties waar internationale wetgeving werd besproken en vastgelegd. She had the four first diplomatic sessions. It was the soul of the meetings. At the beginning of the first session, he declared himself. Um, uh, one of the dreams of my youth is, uh, is, uh, is coming true. Zijn conferenties hebben er ook toe bijgedragen dat Den Haag op de kaart kwam te staan als legal capital of the world. The Hague legal capital started with the Hague conference on private international law. Um, the story is that the legal advisor of the Tsar, uh, Vedor de Martens, attended the first and the second Hague conference in 1893 and 1894. He got back to St. Petersburg, talked with the Tsar, and the Tsar faced with the choice of where to um, hold the first peace conference, chose the Hague. Since the very beginning, the idea have an academy in The Hague uh, was uh, strongly put in, uh, in the thoughts of the founders of the academy. And among these founders, uh, you find Tobias Asser. One conception, one, one we should have a, a new university in The Hague in the field of international law. And Asser was against this idea. He said, no, 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 we must have an academy. Uh, an academy uh, uh, which means a, not a permanent university with permanent professors, but just a place where we would bring uh, prominent lecturers from various countries in order to give uh, lectures. Waarom was volgens Asser de Stichting van een Academie voor Internationaal Recht belangrijk? And, uh, at that time, people saw that were well, well, looking for peace. So there was seeking for peace and they saw that law could be uh, the best tool in order to establish peace. Uh, that was called the, the mov movement of peace through law. An academy is, is a good idea but you have to, to totally separate the, the two aspects. You have, on one side you have arbitration awards and on the other side you have, it is useful, it's extremely useful to have another body an, an academy which aim would be to, to, to develop thoughts about international law. The Permanent Court of Arbitration uh, was uh, established as the result of two very important conferences which took place at The Hague, the so-called peace conferences of The Hague of 1899 and 1907. Uh, Tobias Asser's main influence on the PCA, on the work of the PCA rather, is of course his um, commitment to uh, peace and the rule of law. Uh, the rule of law, um, that is to say both international private law, which um, uh, came um, to its realization in the establishment of the Hague Conference on International Private Law, but international public law, which is um, uh, what the PCA um, um, practices uh, is uh, something which he uh, promoted um, um, as much as he could in the pursuit of peace. 
Hij heeft de Nobelprijs voor de Vrede ontvangen in 1911. En het is de enigste Nederlander die dat heeft gekregen. Oh ja, eerlijk gezegd. Heel bijzonder, ja. ja. Kunt u nu toevoegen aan de, in de informatie? Uh, Stroom. Signore, signori, questi giornalisti sono molto importanti perché mi chiedono una cosa che non sapevo. Grazie. Tobias Assa è Ik sta hier nu met mijn uitzendapparatuur te midden van de schare mensen. Het is druk, de spanning is om te snijden en zoals ieder jaar wordt er weer flink gespeculeerd over wie de Nobelprijs voor de Vrede dit keer in ontvangst mag nemen. Uiteraard wordt dit strikt geheim gehouden, maar oh wat zou het mooi zijn om jullie van een première te bedienen. De tijd begint te dringen als de... Oh, oh. Zeg, mag het wat stiller aan de andere kant? We gaan weer verder jongens. 1, 2... Aha, het Wilhelmus. Het vermoeden, beste dames en heren, bekruipt mij dat de winnaar zomaar eens uit Nederland zou kunnen komen. Aha! Waarom ontving Toby deze prijs? Arthur's chef d'oeuvre was, without doubt, the Hague Conference on Private International, the founding of that, uh, that institution. And uh, that is clear from uh, the Laudatio that he got the prize. First and foremost for his work of the conference. Ik reis af naar Oslo, naar het Nobel Instituut. Daar ontmoet ik Ivar Liebeck, historicus en tevens co-auteur van het boek The Nobel Peace Prize: 100 Years for Peace. He was nominated only once. Uh, that was quite unusual because uh, most of the laureates uh, before First World War, such as Bertha von Suttner and uh, others. Uh, they were nominated for years and years, but the only nomination that Arthur got was this one. Uh, it, he was nominated uh, by a French professor, uh, Charles Lyon Caen, at the Sorbonne. He had to, to have uh, advocates outside the committee, and of course Arthur was known by Norwegian jurists. They thought that international law and international private law was extremely important for this young nation. In the Nobel Peace Prize history, he has been forgotten in many ways. The leading role uh, of Asher for us as an institute carrying his name. His true international orientation is, of course, guiding us. Um, we're living in a, in a totally different time, of course, but um, I think, first of all, he would be very surprised to see that so many of the topics he had put on the agenda are still, uh, are still alive and have been made the object of, of, of important uh, conventions that have, some of which have really a global reach. Um, if you reflect for a second about our times and the complexity uh, of it, uh, meaning globalization and the urgent need for new rules and regulations, I think um, one can say that um, uh, Asa would have been a perfect um, um, personality to deal with some of the problems uh, we are facing today and therefore I think uh, can serve as a role model uh, for um, present uh, diplomats and practitioners of international law. He should be remembered. That's one of the, uh, the tasks that we uh, Nobel historians like. That's to put some life in these important people who has done so much for, for peace.